Hey everybody, welcome to another video. You're probably going to think that this is one big setup. I replaced a customer's console yesterday, a PlayStation 5. It's Boxing Day right now, and I replaced a PS5 for a customer yesterday on Christmas Day after attempting a warranty repair on a console that I'd sold them. I replaced the console, I gave them a fully working console, and if you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend watching that now. But I gave them a working console and I basically kept the faulty one to try and fix. I won't spoil the out outcome of that video, but I ended up replacing it and giving them another console because I couldn't figure it out in a timely fashion on Christmas Day. I didn't want to work, and also I didn't want to let the kid down as well. So I replaced the console, 24 hours later, and I get another phone call. Another one, dead. Literally 24 hours later. It is currently 5.43 p.m on Boxing Day. I literally uploaded the video a couple of hours ago about the other one to repair, and then this one is back. So, yeah, something very, very strange is going on here. What the hell's going on? I don't know. But, yeah, something weird's going on, and we're going to find out what. So, with that being said, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to book in a repair, you can do so by heading to my website, consolefix.co.uk, where you can book it in or get in touch if you've got questions about the repair. That freaking fly is still annoying me. <laughs> if you do want to buy parts for PS5s or any other console, you can go to my online store, consolefix.shop, and you can buy any used parts from the consoles and things that I don't fix. I also do sell working consoles on there as well. But with that being said, let's get into this repair. So, as you can see, I'm supposed to be off work, which means that when I've finished with this console, I just left it here. I haven't even put it back together. So I'm gonna have to tidy this lot up before I can go any further. Okay, that'll do. I really don't care, to be honest, I'm really not in the mood for messing around today. I'm not supposed to be working at all. Let's just see what's going on. I will say one thing, when I took this off the customer, I heard something rattling inside. So, yeah, I honestly don't know what to think with this one. Yep, two second blue light of death. There is no way on earth two consoles can fail in 24 hours. No. I don't believe it. Okay. Let's see what's going on, shall we? So I'm going to get this apart. I am, as you can probably tell by my voice, incredibly annoyed. Because there's no way that two consoles fail in 24 hours. It just don't happen. Right? In two years of working on these, I've never had a PS5 returned after I've fixed a no power issue. Never. In two years. I've had warranty repairs for PS5s, but for other issues. Like, I've had one that come back with a faulty disk drive, I've had one that come back with a damaged HDMI port, and I've had one that come back with spilt liquid metal. But, other than that, I haven't had any returned and I th I'm pretty sure that the ones that come back were the customer's fault when, they're, when they've been knocked and things. So yeah, something just doesn't seem right to me here at all. But I'm sure we'll find out, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> my battery's just died on my drill. There was definitely something rattling around, but it seems to be that it's just, uh, it's flicked out somewhere. I don't know where it was, but it's definitely, there's definitely something that's rattled around in here. And it seems to have dropped out, because I can't hear it now, but, um, yeah, honestly, I don't know. But first of all, before I do anything, let's check the liquid metal. So, I already know what I've done to this. This is one where I changed the HDMI and USB port. So this wasn't even a no power. This never even came to me with no power at all. So to say that it's got no power now, or rather it's got a blue light of death now, is honestly quite hilarious. Okay, this can't have possibly had liquid metal spilt. 
Because I've cut... No. Did I... Did I do a USB port on this? Yes, this is one I've made two videos on. Um, liquid metal got spilt the second time by me. This is the one I accidentally spilt liquid metal with. Hmm. And I can form or coated it. Right, well... Honestly, no, I don't know what to believe. Well, I don't know what to think about this. I still think this has been dropped. There are little spots of liquid metal in places. But this is conform or coated. It shouldn't affect it. Unless it's hit the board. I can't see any liquid metal, but let's take a look under the scope. So, there are little drips of liquid metal here and there on the APU itself. But like I said, this is conform or coated and it shouldn't ever affect it. I'm going to clean it anyway. Alright, well there's the liquid metal sorted. Let's just scan around and see if there's anything I can see here. Hmm, that was a little spot there, it just wiped away with my hand. Okay, this just don't make any sense to me at all. If we look at the... If we look at the heatsink, you can see it there, it's caught it all on the heatsink. This has definitely been dropped. Most definitely been dropped. There is no way on earth I put it back together with liquid metal looking like that. Not a chance. Because when you, in, when you actually put liquid metal down, the first thing you do is clean everything off. So you clean off the heatsink, like this, and then you apply your liquid metal And the only way it can escape is if it gets violently shook about. Hang on, let's just reinstall this. Because that prevents it from happening normally. Okay, what's the status now? Is it going to turn on? No, it's not. What happens with the thermal cam? My RAM turns on. Yeah. Looks like my SSD does. So we'll get a little bit of a heat spot here where the SSD controller is. Okay, I think it's time to get the multimeter out and figure out what's going on. Let's check for some standby voltages. I haven't got my multimeter plugged into the computer because I was using my multimeter downstairs this afternoon. But, yeah. It's not plugged into the computer, so you'll have to take my word for it on whatever I find, but let's just have a look. So we've got 5 volts. We've got 3.3 .3 there. We've got 5 there. We've got 3.3 .3 there. 5 there. 2 there. 0.8 there when I attempt to turn it on. 2.5 there when I attempt to turn it on. 12 there. Should get 1.5 here when I attempt to turn it on. Yeah. And um, we should get 5 here when I attempt to turn it on. No, we do not. No, we've got no 5 volt there. We do have 1.1 there. So we're missing a 5 volt rail just here when I attempt to power it on. I think this has definitely been knocked. Whether or not that's the cause of it, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe faulty electrics, to be honest. It potentially has faulty electrics. The customer potentially has faulty electrics. Right, okay, so if we're missing a 5 volt rail there, do we have any shorts around here? Yes. It's blowing a capacitor. It's blowing a capacitor. That's bad electrics. There's no way that capacitor fails. Now, you might be wondering why I've gone straight to that cap and the reason for that is because that cap there or this bank of caps here I'll show you under the microscope in a second 
But this bank of four caps just here is a common failure point and it's also the cause when we've got no 5 volt here. So if there's no 5 volt on the input side of this cap here when we attempt to turn it on, normally we've got a short up here, or down here rather. Let's have a look under the scope at this. So this is the bank of caps and this is supposed to be a 5 volt rail. And if we take a look here in continuity mode, so I've got one probe on ground, in fact we can do this. And yep, that's a zero ohm short right there. And I'm going to bet my sweet rosy cheeks is cap number three because this cap always fails when it's in a property with poor electrics. Always. Okay, let's inject voltage. I'm going to inject one volt into this rail and I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol to try and determine which cap has failed. I do have a feeling it's going to be cap number three, to be honest. So I'll go for one volt. Let me just drop some isopropyl alcohol there. Okay. I'll inject on the coil so it doesn't skew the results. Okay, it's actually cap number one by the look of it. Yeah, cap number one failed. I'm rather annoyed and I think I might have to void the warranty on this. I think I might have to void the warranty on this because I reckon it's going to keep coming back, to be honest with you. And you'll know if it comes back because I'll make another video because I always do when I get a warranty repair. So essentially what I've just done while I'm just removing this, what I've just done essentially is I've just injected voltage and electricity is always going to take the path with the least resistance to ground and because this is dead short to ground it's got the least resistance to ground because there is no resistance it's dead short with zero ohms to ground which means this cap has essentially turned itself into a wire so because it takes the path with the least resistance that component gets hot and it tells me where the short is Okay, so that's removed. Let's see if we can test that cap. Apparently not. Oh, hang on. I've got my probes in the, in the uh, bench supply again. Well, it's not going to beep with that, is it? It's just going to inject voltage into it. So I'm really not with it today because I'm not supposed to be working. Yeah, that cap's dead short. And yep, yeah, now we don't have a short. So, no more short there. And that one is definitely short. Okay. So I'll grab one of those off a donor board because I don't have values for those caps. I do plan on doing that in the new year. Um, one intention of mine for the new year is to buy an LCR meter. Um, but I want a decent quality one. I don't want to buy a cheap one. But I'm, I'm going to get... Um, hopefully a decent quality LCR meter and yeah then I can start getting values for components on the PS5 because there's far too many components failing on the PS5 and I'm rapidly running out of donor boards so I need to know values so if I get a, a set of LCR uh, well either a set of LCR tweezers or an LCR meter you know a decent quality one I'll be able to get the values for the components that I need to be able to replace them with new components rather than taking them from donor boards and using Sony's poor quality components. And yes, I will be posting all of those findings online as well. So I'm going to take one from this donor board here. This is exactly the same donor board I used yesterday on the other one to repair. Right, so unfortunately for some reason my microscope camera keeps flickering on and off. And I keep having to reset it. I don't know why, but it just does. Okay, there we go. So I'll just clean up with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Okay, there we go. Let's just make sure that the area is not short now. Nope. Nope, no short. Alright. Theoretically, that should now be working. I know I'm not my usual cheerful self, but as you can probably imagine, I'm rather annoyed. Not even just at the fact that I've got to do this, it's the fact that I've got to work on Boxing Day. 
I didn't eat my Christmas lunch yesterday, my Christmas dinner. So I didn't eat yesterday. I haven't eaten today. I haven't done anything other than dealing with this customer. Um, it's taking time away from me and my kids. It's causing me to get stressed out. And yeah, I've got a feeling that this customer, I, I do think this has been knocked. Liquid metal don't just seep out like that. I do think this has been knocked. But I also think that that's not the main contributing factor. I think that the contributing factor for this is purely down to bad electrics in the house. Faulty electrics. And of course this guy's saying, oh, there's nothing wrong with my electrics. Well, you don't have two consoles failing 24 hours, mate. I'm sorry, but you don't. And to be honest, I'm going to have a think because... To be honest with you, I'm sort of tempted to just give the customer the money back and send it to someone else. I'm genuinely tempted. I'm going to have to think long and hard about it because, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know whether I should do that or not. I don't know whether I should even entertain the idea of giving them back a working consult. I am seriously contemplating refunding the customer. And just cutting my losses on time, to be honest. <laughs> yep. And now it turns on. Now it turns on. It's unbelievable. How two consoles in 24 hours can fail with catastrophic failures. And it's in the same household. It just doesn't happen at all. In two years of repairing these, these have been out for two years now, and in two years of repairing these, I haven't had any come back when I've fixed power issues on them. Yes, other consoles I have, like Xboxes, um, Xbox One S's are notorious for that, to be honest. But I've never had it happen on a PS5 in two years. In the same household, in 24 hours, I've had two warranty repairs. So I am seriously contemplating now whether or not I should give them this console back or whether I should just refund them and say no, go somewhere else, go and buy a new one and Sony can deal with it. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I'm going to try and get this video edited tonight. Um, so a little bonus for some of the regular viewers, two, two videos in one night. I'm going to try and get it edited, edited tonight. Let me know what you would do. Would you give this customer the money back or would you give them the working console back? I do feel a bit sorry for the kid. The fact that they've had a PS5 for Christmas and yeah, they obviously want a PS5, they're a little bit upset. But at the same time, I can't keep dealing with this customer. I cannot keep wasting my time with this customer. It's not fair on me, it's not fair on my family, it's not fair on the kid. Um, you know, if they buy one from Sony and the same thing happens again, then obviously they know full well that they've got one, that they've got an issue in the house. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise for them. I'm not trying to make excuses here. But I stand by my repairs. And in two years, I've never had one come back under warranty for no power issues. Never. So let me know what you think down in the comments down below. That is going to be for this video. I don't think I need to show you the display working. As you can see, it is booting up and it is working. But let me know what you think down in the comments down below. What would you do in this situation? Would you replace it? Uh, sorry, would you give them this back and hope it doesn't come back again? Or would you give them the money back? because I know what I'm leaning towards right now. So let me know what you think down in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you do want to organise a repair, you can do so by heading over to the website in the video description. I do stand by my warranties. I do stand by my repairs, and I do have confidence in my repairs. Something's not right here. But consolefix.co.uk, you can book in a repair, or you can get in touch if you've got a question about one. If you do want to buy any parts, consolefix.shop. Links are all in the video description. And uh, if you're looking for another video to watch, then check out one that's going to pop up on the screen right now. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a very Merry Christmas, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.